Why is Marshall like you the stormtrooper hunting the Jedi? You got to be the Jedi doing the hunting of the stormtrooper. What are you blinking talking about? Sounding in Ras Barlin, man. What are you blinking talking about? No, fuck you, Dennis. I ain't had no one teach me jack shit in my life. A mum or dad, brother or sister, no one my whole life. Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin, I'm a film critic, and you're watching The Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, that sort of thing. So if you like movies and film culture, and you like to see people pick it apart, please consider subscribing. Welcome back to Small Axe Saturdays, where every week until the end of this whole thing, we're going to be looking at one of the new entries in Steve McQueen's new film series, Small Axe, produced by the BBC and Amazon Prime. This week's installment is a film called Alex Wheatle, which is based on the true story of a black British writer's early days. Incidentally, Alex Wheatle is actually one of the original writers in the Small Axe Writers Room, and it's through that process that McQueen and his collaborators decided to make Wheatle's true life story one of the chapters in the series. The real Alex Wheatle was nervous to share such like intimate and like honest moments about his early life, but it's a very good thing he did because this biography of his young life ends up being one of the most important, in my opinion, the most impactful chapters in the entire series. Alex Wheatle follows newcomer Shay Cole as the titular character, following him through four primary periods of his young life. We see him as a kid growing up in a care home in Croydon in the late 60s and early 70s as one of the only black children surrounded by bullying white kids and the white adults who enable them. Later we see him aging out of that same group home, settling into a youth hostel in the late 70s, being around people that look like him for the first time, and his journey of self-discovery. We also see his four-month stint in prison following his involvement in the 1981 Brixton Uprising, where he meets an older man who becomes his mentor. And finally, him coming out the other side of that experience, fully radicalized, and finally finding his place within the world as a writer. Alex Wheel might be the most obviously Steve McQueen of the chapter so far, with its aggressively non-linear structure, hyper-focus on one individual character, and its power as a story of confinement, both literal and otherwise. There are many moments where McQueen is able to slow things down to a crawl, lingering his camera on Cole's wheel long enough for us to stare through his exterior, to dig around in what we think to be his thoughts in difficult moments. This format works so efficiently, putting Weedle into difficult situations that quickly get across larger issues, then relying on Cole's subtle emotive power to draw conclusions about those situations and how they're impacting his character. I've seen some reviews that call this the worst of the Small Axe film so far, and the one that feels the most like a regular episode of television, and I attribute that mostly to the film's short length, as I too left my viewing feeling like I wish it had been longer. But after some thought, I firmly believe, had this been a standalone feature, it would be longer. But it's not a standalone feature, it's part of a larger project. Alex Weedle is able to be such a lean film because it's implicitly tethered to the three films that precede it. The riots are connected to the outrage in Mangrove, Weedle's exploration of the music scene rhymes with the house party in Lover's Rock, his interactions with the cops lend more credence and dimension to the systemic policing issues in Red, White, and Blue, and yes, the film works fine enough on its own, but it's only within that wider context that it becomes something truly special. For me, the best parts of the movie are all the scenes that take place between Weedle moving into the youth hostel and ending up in jail, as it features the most dramatic elements of his character's progression, beginning with his awkwardness and unease trying to blend into a new environment so foreign from what he's ever known, and moving through him adapting to the culture around him, finding solace in music, finding community and kinship, and setting him up for the important lessons he learns behind bars, the importance of understanding one's past in order to have a future. Alex Weedle is easily the most underrated of the Small Axe films thus far. It doesn't immediately bowl you over like Mangrove or Lover's Rock did, but it still features McQueen at the peak of his filmmaking powers, iterating on the series themes in potent and impactful ways. With only one more chapter to go, I'm a little bit bummed that this massive achievement is no doubt going to be in some ways overlooked, because to compare Small Axe to regular prestige television feels really limiting, but in the film space, there's just not any other examples of a five-film series in this specific form factor. Classification debates aside, Small Axe still rocks, and Alex Weedle is still much must see. Those are my feelings about Alex Weedle in the penultimate chapter of Small Axe. I think everyone should see it. There's just no reason not to. It's on Amazon Prime. It's on the BBC thing or whatever. There are ways to see it. It's totally worth it. And like you just, just don't miss it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. Hit the little bell icon so you get notifications when I put out new videos. I'll have a lot more new videos coming out in the coming weeks. And if you have any thoughts about the film or want to talk about Steve McQueen or anything really, you can do so in the comments. I'm pretty much always around. So I hope everyone's doing well, being good to yourselves and each other, wearing your masks. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.